Chapter 2 Anakin was thrown back by the force of the blow. His foot slid on an ice patch, sending him careening close to the edge of the cliff. Obi-Wan leaped. With one arm, he kept his lightsaber slashing at the tail, which continued to flail toward Anakin. With the other hand, he reached out and yanked Anakin to safety. Anakin recovered his balance immediately and activated his training lightsaber. It was not capable of the same power as a Jedi lightsaber, but it could protect him somewhat. It was up to Obi-Wan to ensure that his Padawan wasn't vulnerable. The Gorgodons were roused now. They awoke in a fury, jaws snapping and eyes rolling. They roared, the fur sticking up now in sharp spikes. They bared their triple rows of sharp yellow teeth at the intruders. Obi-Wan and Anakin had no choice. The Gorgodons were prepared to fight to the death. As usual before a battle, Obi-Wan's mind went clear and still. Look for the weakness in the strength. Yes, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan fought. Their great size makes them powerful, but it also makes them clumsy. I will use that. The largest Gorgodon loped toward him. It had the dead, relentless gaze of a predator as it raised a paw as big as a grave sled to swat Obi-Wan. He was sure he would be sent flying off the cliff if it connected. The blow was slow in coming, at least for the reflexes of a Jedi. Obi-Wan had time to contemplate his move and the likely counter-attack. Mindful of Anakin, he rolled to the right, drawing the Gorgodon in that direction. The creature swung out with its tail as it missed, as Obi-Wan expected it to. Obi-Wan struck a blow to the Gorgodon's side. He felt the impact shudder through his lightsaber. The skeletal structure of the Gorgodon was extraordinarily strong, as well as covered by deep layers of fat and muscle. It would take more than one blow to fell such a creature. At the same time, Anakin leaps to the side, slashing at the giant paw with his lightsaber. The creature gave a howl as the two blows connected. It whirled around with surprising speed, the lethal tail whipping forward toward Anakin. This time the boy was prepared. He leaped backward, somersaulting in the air to give himself momentum. When he came down, he delivered a blow to the Gorgodon's nose that surprised the animal. Another roar brought the other Gorgodons closer to protect their comrade. Tails slashed and paws rose, claws ripping at their clothing. There was little time for Obi-Wan or Anakin to strike any effective blows. They were too busy trying to stay out of the way. Suddenly, Obi-Wan's foot hit a patch of black ice. Hidden by the shadows, the ice was slick and deadly. He slid helplessly straight toward the Gorgodon. The great beast bared its yellow teeth and raised its massive arms to pin him between them. Anakin accessed the force and leaped as high as he could. He came down on a paw, which flicked him off like a flimsy jura sheet. The boy flew back and hit the cave wall, dazed. Obi-Wan regained his balance and struck out in a furious series of moves. His lightsaber was a blur as he dived fainted and reversed, striking blow after blow at the Gorgonon's paws and body. The blows wouldn't kill it, but they did slow it down. One angry ear-splitting roar followed another. Obi-Wan moved so fast the Gorgonon, the Gorgodon could not track him. Anakin's head cleared and he raced forward to join Obi-Wan. He did not notice that another Gorgodon had craftily moved to cut him off. Anakin was directly in the creature's path, caught between the Gorgodon and the sheer cliff. Obi-Wan limped forward. The only course open to him was to place himself between the creature and Anakin. He struck out at the creature's face with his lightsaber, but he saw the giant paws come together, trapping him. Obi-Wan's breath left his body at the blow. The Gorgodon brought Obi-Wan to the chest in a death hug. Obi-Wan's face was buried in the foul-smelling fur. 
He choked, struggling to fill his lungs. Instead, he breathed fur. The animal squeezed him tighter. He was afraid his ribs would crack. His last reserves of breath whooshed out of his body. He tried to move his arms, but he was pinned. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a blur. A second later, the animal howled, and its grip loosened just a bit. He realised that Anakin had used his cable launcher. The sharp end had dug into the Gorgodon's fleshy back. Now Anakin was above him, on top of the creature. The Gorgodon's grip intensified. Obi-Wan fought to stay conscious as his vision went grey. He kicked out with his feet, but it was like kicking the face of the mountain. Just when he thought he could hold out no longer, the Gorgodon's grip lessened and its arms opened, dropping Obi-Wan abruptly to the hard ground. He scrambled out of the way as the animal fell dead. Clinging to the Gorgodon's neck, Anakin launched himself off the animal's body to land clear. He'd been able to feel the creature at the soft, vulnerable point in its neck. The other Gorgodons smelled the death of their comrade. With surprising speed, they dug their sharp claws into the cliff face and began to scramble up the ice to the next peak. Panting, Anakin turned off his training lightsaber. Obi-Wan rose slowly to his feet, still struggling to catch his breath. They both paused, their clothing torn by the Gorgodon's claws. Their hair matted with sweat. Obi-Wan peeled off his goggles, and Anakin did the same. He grinned at his Padawan. Thanks for that. Now comes the hard part. Anakin wiped sweat off his forehead. Glad to hear it, I was getting bored. Despite his words, Obi-Wan could see that the battle had drained Anakin. His Padawan hated to show weakness, yet Obi-Wan also knew that Anakin would recover quickly. We should remove our survival gear here, Obi-Wan said, stripping off his gloves. We won't need it inside the cave. The crystals are deep within. To reach them, you will have to pass through visions and voices. Some of them may frighten you. Some of them are drawn from your own past. They are your deepest fears. That is what you must face. Anakin now stood in his tunic. The cold wind did not cause him to shiver. His shoulders squared and he took a step toward the cave. I am ready. Obi-Wan put a hand on his sleeve. Remember your training, Anakin, he said. Let your fear enter you. Do not battle it. There's no shame in it. Your feelings are your strength. Experience them and let them go as you proceed toward your goal. There are lessons to be learned, even from fear and anger. Face those lessons and move on with calm and justice. I know all these things, Anakin said, a trace of impatience in his voice. No, Obi-Wan said softly. You do not, but you will. Once inside the cave, they were plunged into darkness. The walls of the cave were of black stone. The stone was smooth and shiny, but it swallowed light rather than reflected it. Entering the cave was like entering a void. Should I use a glow rod? Anakin's voice echoed. No, wait for your eyes to adjust. Obi-Wan reached into his tunic and took out a small pouch. He placed it in Anakin's hand. Here is the hilt you worked on, and the other components. After you find the crystals, you will fashion the lightsaber to your own hand. Do not rush the task. Some Jedi take days or weeks to make it. However long it takes you, I will wait. We will stay on Ilum as long as necessary. Now they could distinguish the shape of the walls around them and the stray rocks in their path. Obi-Wan walked farther into the cave and gestured at the black walls. Here is our history. Over the centuries, Jedi history had been recorded on the walls of the cave. The drawings were made of strong shapes and lines, just enough to suggest the truth of a scene or the character of a Jedi. 
Names were inscribed in rows that went from the ceiling to the floor. There were also signs and symbols that Obi-Wan and Anakin didn't understand. Go back, here is what you fear. The voice was a murmur, more like a running brook. Anakin looked at Obi-Wan questioningly. It begins now, Obi-Wan said softly. You must go forward alone. A Jedi stepped forward from the cave wall. His tunic fell all the way to the tips of his bare feet. The lightsaber he held looked like an ancient weapon. His expression was so fierce that Anakin stopped dead. There are so many pleasures in the galaxy. Why do you deprive yourself? The Jedi path is narrow. Why choose it? It will only bring you grief. Obi-Wan waited to see what his Padawan would do. The time for his instruction was over. After a moment, Anakin walked forward, and the Jedi Knight disappeared. Anakin was soon swallowed up by the darkness of the cave. Obi-Wan could wait by the entrance, but he had only been to the cave once, years ago, and he found his curiosity just as strong. His steps took him farther into the cave. He was willing to lose sight of Anakin. He knew his Padawan must face the cave alone, but he did not want him to get too far away. He saw a shape move toward him, a tall Jedi, powerfully built, but still graceful, a rugged face with compassionate eyes. Master, he breathed. Qui-Gon smiled. Obi-Wan's heart cracked. Joy rushed through him. Tears sprang to his eyes. I have missed you. Qui-Gon said nothing. He made a gesture across his throat, as though he could not speak. His image, Obi-Wan saw now, shimmered faintly. Suddenly, Qui-Gon whirled, and his lightsaber was in his sand. He struck again and again at an unseen enemy. Obi-Wan stumbled back, his hand on the hilt of his lightsaber. He knew that this was not truly Qui-Gon, that his master was not in danger. But the impulse to help was so strong he nearly drew his weapon. Before he could do so, Qui-Gon suddenly staggered. Now he was facing Obi-Wan. He saw the shock in his master's eyes. It was how he had looked when he'd received the death blow from the Sith Lord. No, Obi-Wan shouted. He could not relive that moment again. He could not. This is not my test, Master. It is my Padawan's. Do not do this to me. Qui-Gon fell to his knees. His eyes remained on Obi-Wan. The sadness in his gaze tore into Obi-Wan, searing and hot. The image disappeared, only to reappear a heartbeat later. Again he saw Qui-Gon double over. Again he saw him sink to his knees. Obi-Wan was as helpless to reach out as he'd been four years earlier. Was he being taunted with his own failure to prevent his master's death? No, Obi-Wan whispered. Again and again he was forced to relive Qui-Gon's slow dying. He groped for calm, but could not find it. All he could feel was pain. He raged again at his helplessness. He trapped behind the energy bars. He had watched his master fall. It was a central event of his life. Why was he forced to relive it here? On his knees, Qui-Gon reached out to Obi-Wan. This time, the image did not fade. Grief choked Obi-Wan as he took a half-step toward his master. Something was different this time. Qui-Gon's eyes were not filmed with pain. They were clear. They were holding a message, a warning, a plea. Obi-Wan did not know. What is it, master? What are you telling me? Qui-Gon shook his head helplessly. His hands trembled as he reached out to Obi-Wan. His fingers could almost touch Obi-Wan's tunic. As they come closer, the image dissolved into shimmering sparks of light. Obi-Wan was so shaken, he fell to his knees as Qui-Gon had. He felt the dampness of his cheeks, marked by tears. 
he had been given a message, but he could not decipher it. All he knew was that he had just faced his greatest fear. Since Qui-Gon's death, he had been afraid that he would let down Qui-Gon, even as he struggled to uphold his legacy. Was Qui-Gon warning him that he was in danger of failing, after all?